Hello, this is Eric White. Today I'm going to discuss how you can precisely place images on worksheets in OpenXML spreadsheets. Sometimes corporations have a particular requirement for branding on their spreadsheets. They may require to have a corporate logo at some particular place on the worksheet. And those marketing people, sometimes they're pretty finicky. They want their logo to not be distorted horizontally or vertically. They want to have the aspect ratio of their corporate logo to be correct when they place the image on their worksheet. This screencast discusses the markup that you have to know in order to precisely place images on spreadsheets. In a previous screencast, I showed how you can precisely calculate the pixel sizes of cells on a worksheet. That code is a prerequisite to precisely placing images on a worksheet. We'll make use of that code in the code that I'll present today. The first thing that I'm going to discuss is exactly how images are placed on worksheets. To do this, I'm going to create a new worksheet. To make it easier to discuss how images are placed on a worksheet, I'm going to increase the column widths and row heights in this worksheet. I'll select the entire worksheet. I'll make the columns wider and make the rows higher. Now I've got a worksheet with larger cells. This will make it easier for us to see exactly what's going on. I'll save this worksheet. Let's take a look at this image that I'm going to place on the worksheet. This is the entrance to the palace at Mysore, and we want to place this image on the worksheet in such a way that its aspect ratio is preserved. I'll pick Insert Picture. I'll select the image and pick Insert. And I'm going to move it over here so that the top left corner is in the middle of some cell. In this particular case, it's in the middle of B2. And the bottom right corner is in the middle of a cell. And in this case, it's in the middle of D5. I'll save the worksheet and close it. I'm going to drag this worksheet onto Visual Studio and look at the markup in the OpenXML Package Editor Power Tool for Visual Studio, which you can get at this location. And here, let's take a look inside Sheet 1. I'll format the XML and I'll come to the bottom this drawing element is the relevant element that we are interested in. This drawing element specifies a relationship ID of RID1. And if I look at that relationship, what I'll see is that it points to drawing1.xml. And I can also see that drawing1.xml contains a relationship to image1.png. That's my image, of course. Let's look at drawing1.xml. I'll format the XML. And the relevant information that we're interested in here is the from and to elements in this two cell anchor element. As you can see, it goes from column one, row one, in other words, B2, to column three, row four, in other words, D5. And these column offset and row offset elements, those are in emus. And emus are a special measurement that has characteristics that we're interested in here. Let's go take a look at emus in the OpenXML standard. I'm going to section 20.1.2.1 20 of the OpenXML standard and looking at the emu unit of measurement. And I can see that 914,400 emus is equal to 1 US inch. And 
360,000 emus is equal to one centimeter. As you can see here, the emu was created in order to evenly divide in both English and metric units. This means that you can precisely specify one inch in an emu, and you can precisely specify one centimeter in an emu. So if we look at these values, we can see that the column offset is 400 thousandths over 900 thousandths. In other words, the column offset is about half an inch, and the row offset is about a third of an inch. Let's look at that worksheet. And we can see that that is the situation. The column offset is the distance from the left edge of the cell to the upper left corner of that image. And the row offset is the distance from the top of the cell to the upper left corner of the image. Now let's look at the column offsets and row offsets for the lower right corner. We can see that the column offset is 647,000, which is about two-thirds of an inch, and the row offset is about 200,000, and that's a little less than one-fourth of an inch. And here, this correlates to the distance from the upper left corner of the D5 cell. This is the column offset, and this is the row offset. In other words, to precisely place an image, you have to find the two cells that the upper left corner and the lower right corner are going to fall into, and then you have to specify in emus the distance from the upper left corner of each one of those cells. And this is why we need to have the pixel sizes of cells so that we can figure out exactly into which cells those corners are going to fall, and so that we can calculate the emu offsets. To write the code to place the image precisely, I started with the code that calculates the precise sizes of cells. You can see up here the method to get the normal font info, and the method to get the column widths in pixels, and the method to get the row heights in pixels. If you have any questions about these methods, go take a look at the screencast that I recorded on how to calculate these values. The first thing that I did is I wrote a method to place an image in a sheet. A fair amount of this method is just plumbing. In other words, it needs to get a GUID that's going to become the relationship ID. It's then going to add that drawing element into the worksheet. It's going to create the drawing part and the image part, and then it's going to set up the drawing part with those values that I pass into this method. So this method's pretty dumb. It doesn't know anything about how to calculate those values, the from column and the from column offset, and the from row and the from row offset. It's just going to create the right markup once the code has figured out the from column from row, two column, and two row, and all the various offsets. Down here at the bottom of this method, you can see where it reads the image into a byte array and streams the image into the image part. To summarize, this method, place image in sheet, takes care of all the plumbing to insert the image into an OpenXML spreadsheet. And down here in the main method of this example, this method, first of all, deletes test2 if it exists, and then it copies test to test2. This enables us to play around with things and run it over and over again without messing with our source spreadsheet. It then finds the sheet1 and loads it. It finds out the dimensions of that image, that palace gate image. The next thing that this code does is it calls those methods to get the column widths in pixels and the row heights in pixels, and then it transforms that using the rollup extension method into column positions and row positions. 
So let's take a look at the results of that calculation just so that we're clear about how that works. I'll uncomment that code and put an environment.exit there and control F5. And here you can see this column here contains those column sizes as calculated by the method that I discussed. And this column of values here contains the pixel positions of each one of the columns. I'll comment the code again. This code assumes that we want to start the position of the image at an upper left corner of a cell. It then finds the ending column. It then calculates the pixel overlap and then calculates the column emu offset. And it does the exact same operation for the row, which is it figures out what the ending row is, figures out what the pixel overlap is, and then figures out what the emu value is for the row offset. And finally, it calls the method place image in sheet. Here you can see that it passes in zero for the offsets for the upper left corner, and then it passes in those calculated values for the offsets for the lower right corner. This is just basic arithmetic. If you have different needs, in other words, if you need to position the image at the upper right corner of a cell, or if you need to center an image in a cell, you can quite easily figure out how to adjust these calculations. Let's do one more thing here. I'm going to open test.xlsx and I'm going to more or less randomly adjust the column widths here. And I'm going to adjust some row heights here. I'll save the document and close it. Now let's run the example. It runs in no time at all, of course. We can open up the image and it looks like the aspect ratio is correct. So let's double check it. Let's look at the properties for this image. And the image is 310 pixels wide and 137 pixels high. Let's look at the size and properties of this image. And we can see that it's 1.43 inches high and 3.23 inches wide. And let's calculate. 137 divided by 310, in other words, the ratio of the height to the width is 0.4419. And if I divide 1.43 by 3.23, I get 0.4427. The ratio is the same down to the 1 1,000th position. There will be some very minor differences. Excel may adjust in some minor way. In addition, the precision of this height and width is not so precise. We can see that we have place this image onto the worksheet in the size that we wanted without disturbing the aspect ratio. And now we can do a little experiment. Let's go back to the code and let's say that I want to multiply the height and width of the image by 1.6. So I am going to make it larger but preserve the exact same aspect ratio. And I run it. And the image does have the correct aspect ratio. As usual, the code is attached to the blog post that accompanies this screencast. That's all I'm going to cover here. Come back often to openxmldeveloper.org and see the new content that we're posting up there. Follow me on Twitter at ericwhitedev. 
Follow OpenXML on Twitter at OpenXMLDev. And you can also visit my personal blog at ericwhite.com.